The addiction to drugs like heroin, nicotine, which is in tobacco, um, and even caffeine, which is in coffee, are far stronger on a chemical, physiological level than anything that we've been able to document with um, withdrawal from the use of, of marijuana. The, the classic addiction that we imagine is uh, addiction to opiates or you know injection drugs like heroin. You imagine the cravings, you imagine the you get so sick if you don't have the medicine or the drug, uh, you go through chills, your nose starts to run, your eyes water, uh, you're sick to your stomach, you're vomiting, diarrhea. That's all, that's called um, a withdrawal syndrome. And then there's something called tolerance, and that's where you need more of the drug to achieve the same effect. Uh, and then there's the addiction, the psychological compulsion, you're orienting your whole life around trying to find and procure this, at the, and, and uh, your personal, your social, your functioning uh, suffers as a result. That is our, I think, our model of addiction. And then depending on how socially available the substance is, like for example, tobacco is available everywhere, so people uh, will very rarely experience all these crave, uh, withdrawal syndromes versus if it's your drug of addictive choice is uh, an opioid that's hard to get, you'll see varying degrees of behavior uh, on the spectrum. But when it comes to marijuana, the We've tried to look for withdrawal syndromes. They talk about mild sleep changes for people who've been using it heavily and then stop using it. Uh, EEG disturbances, a little change in your brainwave pattern, uh, a little bit of difficulty sleeping, a little bit of anxiety, reduced mood, uh, and that's uh, which kind of dissipates over, over time. Uh, not that same uh, all of a sudden change in your physiology where you're extremely sick and can't function and um, uh, also, there's no uh, life-threatening nature whatsoever like there is when you withdraw from Valium or, or benzodiazepines, which can actually, the withdrawal can kill you. And the same thing with alcohol, the withdrawal can kill you. No, nothing like that with marijuana. The main thing there is a, uh, the, the behavioral and social conditions that set, would set up a compulsive use pattern, prohibiting it, uh, doing things on the sly. It turns out some people psychologically do report improved psychological functioning using this substance. Um, and as you would expect, because the compounds have been shown to have antidepressive qualities, anti-anxiety properties. So it's possible when people are, are no longer using it abruptly that they revert to a state that might have previously been their uh, prior state, which was more depressed and more anxious. So that's always something to figure, consider as well if you're wondering if, if, if a substance is a withdrawal syndrome or really just a withdrawal of, a sub, of an agent that was helping improve the psychological functioning. So the bottom line is uh, there have been studies done. Uh, they try to find what percentage of users of marijuana become addicted. Uh, that they, they quote this figure 9%. The Institute of Medicine does, but those are based on surveys where you have to answer questions like, do you spend a lot of time looking for this substance? Uh, you know, have you have you faced legal problems uh, when, because of your use? And a lot of those answers might be more related to the, the just the social phenomenon of, of um, you know, really trying to, to stamp out the use of marijuana rather than any actual um, chemical or physiological dependence or addiction on the drug.